Welcome to a spoiler-free look at the Wrath expansion for the fantasy deck-building game Draconis Invasion. Thanks, Jeff Lai, designer of the game, for sending us copies of the base game and this expansion to check out. No other compensation was provided. Now, Draconis Invasion Wrath was designed by Jeff Lai and features artwork from Manthos Lapis, which is the pair who brought us the original game. So that's always a good thing to see. They didn't bring anyone new on. You got the same design team working on this game. Now, this expansion can be played from one to six players. And the hard part here is games could take 15 minutes up to two hours depending on your player count so that's a rough one it's very dependent on the players and what cards are in play some rounds are going to be lightning fast others are going to be much longer now a copy of draconis invasion the original box set is required to use this expansion and you probably want to own all the promo cards for the game as well but much more about that later now, Wrath successfully kickstarted in 2018 by Keji Inc., and backers have received their copies. So all the reviews and everything on Board Game Geek right now are all based on kickstarted versions of the games, all the ratings and everything. The production version is still not in stores. It's not available in retail due to current logistical issues that are going on. Now, at this point, the only place you can actually find this game is for pre-order directly from the publisher, and he is currently selling it for an MSRP of $47 Canadian. Now, I'll say straight up, this expansion and the base game itself are on the expensive side, mm -hmm. but we are in a world of increasing costs, and unfortunately, this may become more of a standard pricing for games of this size. Now, I will add that right now, both the base game, the expansion, and all the promos are on sale as part of the pre-order sale on the Draconis website. Now might be the perfect time to order this game if it sounds cool. I don't know how long that'll last, and I don't know what the prices will be once it hits retail. Now, as for what Wrath is, so this continues the story from Draconis Invasion, which was this invading army trying to capture your kingdom. The story continues in this expansion box, spilling outside of the city is all I'll say. It includes over 400 new cards for the game, covering every single card type from the game, including actions, defenders, invaders, campaigns, events, dividers, and even some special cards that have very limited use. Now, these cards are split over 13 sealed packs that can be played through in order to form a continuing campaign. If you want to check out what you get in the box and how it's packaged, be sure to check out our Draconis Invasion Wrath unboxing video on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Due to the fact that this is a campaign style expansion with sealed decks, and we didn't want to spoil anything, Mo is careful not to show off any hidden information in that video. And to be honest, I'm not sure how interesting an unboxing it really is when I'm not actually showing off the cards, but I really didn't want to spoil anything. Yeah, in hindsight, deck 13 probably could have been yes. uh, part of that, but we didn't we'll know. Open up deck one because everyone's going to see deck one the first time they play. Right. It's probably what I should have done, but I didn't want to do it at the time. Now, what you do get is it comes in a, a, a standard card size box, like trading card size, like go buy a box of baseball cards, size card box. Uh, the 13 sealed packs are Tetris in there in a rather interesting way due to the various card sizes used in this game. Uh, if you just check out my original view, you would have seen the, the square cards and the half cards that are in there. Well, it may not be pretty. It worked. Uh, everything was nicely, tightly packed. Nothing was sliding around, and I had no concern that anything would be damaged. Now, the cards themselves are of excellent quality, which is obviously true of the base game. These are honestly some of the best deck building cards I've played with. They have a linen finish with them. They're nice and thick. They're a joy to shuffle. Uh, one of the things I noticed playing this, which was true of the original game, but I didn't catch it, is there's no borders. And I don't know anyone who's played Magic for a long time, but you know the borders wear on your cards. Well, the art is full bleed, which I thought was a nice touch. And speaking of the artwork, I am very pleased to say that much of the artwork, not all, but much of the artwork is brighter and more colorful than that in the base game. Though I do still feel like they should have upped the brightness a bit more, and I do wonder if it's that whole screen versus printer issue. It just could have been a little bit brighter. Yeah, and one thing I will say is about the quality of these cards, uh, it is a major reason why the price isn't as bad as it is. Uh, you aren't getting linen finish cards that will shuffle this and hold up this well when you buy Magic. Um, these are a step above in the quality of each individual card. And not only do they last better, but they just feel better shuffling. They do. Like, like they just do. The tactile nature of those cards is really nice. And you don't have the slippery piles that want to fall over. That that I hate when I get that in games. 
but yes, the regarding the art, the market is finally no longer a wash of a single color across mm -hmm. the entire field. You get pops of color and intensity that make certain cards stand out that in a way that we never really noticed in the base game, except for one card, the Sorceress, that we've talked about several times. Everything was blue and gray. Nothing, except the sorceress. nothing except the Sorceress is it sticks in our head because yeah. that was the colorful card, right? That's that's the reason we remember that card is because that artwork stood out so much. Now, one issue we did notice, uh, and to be honest, it took a few plays before we noticed it, just to show how not obvious it is, is the card backs are not a perfect match for the original. They are really dang close, but not quite there. Now, I know right there, that's going to be a deal breaker for some card game players. There are card game players who insist that your expansions must look identical to the original. Uh, honestly, we didn't find it to be a problem at all. Uh, especially once you mix in these 400 new cards, like there's a 50, 50 chance it's going to be a newer old card. So it's not like knowing that's a new card is going to give you much of an advantage. Uh, but there are going to be some people turned off by that. And of course the other fix is to get um, card backs, right? Like sleeves that have some, you know, your favorite artwork on the back of it. Then you'll never have to worry about that. Uh, what was interesting is uh, in our set, we actually noticed an even larger difference in one of the monsters for the base game. Yeah. Changing from within the base game. So again, it's this may not be a huge concern because it's not as as easy a divide as new cards and old cards. Yes. Uh, even within the print run, there are some slight variances there. Yeah, and it wasn't just the monsters. I think Cat noticed some that weren't monster cards that were original cards. They were just like a little bit darker or whatever. And to be honest, there's so many cards going around. You're shuffling so much, like you're unless you're playing for money. Who cares? Now, in addition to these sealed packs, um, there is a little bit more in the box. There is a two-sided sheet that tells you how to use the contents of the box, which also includes the updated version 1.1 rules. So just in case you're one of the few people out there that has version one of Draconis Invasion and haven't gone online to download the new rules, those are included in here, along with reference cards that show the new A, B, C, D, E, F system. That was actually something new in the second printing. And then there is the best piece ever, the cloth bag which we now know is actually for holding these square cards once you take them out of the package. Though I honestly don't know why you just wouldn't use the cloth bag in the original Draconis to hold all the square cards. Personally, I appreciate another nice large bag I can use in another game. Now, as for the amount of stuff you get, the quality of the stuff, I was impressed by the, the volume of this box and the quality of it. Well, now that we have a vague idea of what comes in this expansion box, how about you give us an overview of how to use the Wrath expansion for Draconis Invasion? So let me start by saying nothing really changes as far as the rules are concerned. The basic rules, the A, B, or C, or D, or E, then F, all the same. You continue to play the game. You even continue to set up the game the same way you always had just by adding some new cards and maybe a couple rule twists, like a little unique, like uh, stack the deck differently or put out a slightly different number of things or put out different action cards, which I think is fantastic for people who enjoyed the original game. To use Wrath when you first open it up is really simple. Find all the packs with stickers on them with a the number one on them. I think there's three. Open them up, read the scenario card for a bit of a backstory, Flip it over, and it'll give you setup instructions, set it up, and play. Yeah, and hopefully, as well as the uh, the market layout, they, any minor play or setup changes per scenario are right there on that card, uh, on that reference card for each scenario mm -hmm. pack. So by the end of it, you'll end up have 12 little cards that both give you the, the market layout and any rule variations or yes. setup variations right there in those 12 cards. So now the first pack does contain the most new cards out of any of the future packs. And it gives you new events, actions, defenders, more. Like there's a lot of stuff in this first one, including new, new um, what are they called? The bad guys. I'm drawing a blank on what they're called. Invaders. Thank you. Invaders is more. Now you play through that scenario, right? You read the card. You got the setup. You set up. You play. Two players, six players. Doesn't matter. You finish it. You play pack number two. Rinse and repeat for 12 more packs. The 13th pack, because I did say there's 13 packs here, doesn't have any new rules in it. What it is is all the dividers for the cards in the expansion. 
And while the game says save this to the end, it might spoil it. Just open it. Like it's just a bunch of names and artwork. It doesn't tell you what these cards do or what their need abilities is or how the rules change. All you're getting spoiled on is a name and artwork. So I personally recommend open that first because then when you're playing, you can put your cards away as you're playing. Yeah, if you don't open this pack 13, you're probably going to hate yourself when you have to go through and organize new cards into the main box later unless you keep them all separate forever. Um, and But they provide randomizers for all these cards, so I don't know why you would keep them separate. Uh, realistically, you're because these cards are coming and going throughout mm -hmm. the games, so they'll, they'll come in for a couple scenarios, come back out again. Uh, you're going to want to have these all nice and organized, so yeah. just get those dividers in. Like, honestly, like what, what, what does it matter if you know there is a sorceress? That tells you nothing. You know there's a sorceress, great, and here's the artwork for it. <laughs> now, one thing I think you should do, and, and I recommend this to everyone in something that, that it's not in the rules, this isn't an official suggestion, this is a tabletop bellhop suggestion from, I think, all five people who have played the game with me, is don't open the next pack until you actually win. So when you finish a game of Draconis Invasion, there's two ways to win. One is one of the players kills a set number of the invaders. And in that case, the heroes have won, right? You defeated the invaders. The other way is for the event deck to run out when your forces retreat. Now, retreating to me means you should lose. And if you finish on a retreat, but then unlock the new scenario, it just doesn't make sense, right? It doesn't make sense thematically. Plus, when you're reading the story, it's not going to make any sense because the story is all about you won, you had a victory, and you did something because of this victory. Well, you're like, well, I didn't have a victory. We all retreated. What's going on? And the other thing is it will also greatly increase the challenge. And again, I don't want to spoil anything, but there's a couple specific missions where having the special rules for that missions and then making it so you have to not retreat would make those missions much more interesting. And I don't recall if we said this in our initial review explicitly, but so. this should be a basic feature of the game. If the retreat card is revealed, no one wins. The game wins. However you want to phrase it, you should not advance and pick a winner. Yeah. The, like I said, the way the game is, you retreat, but you still add up victory points and someone still wins. And then the team in this campaign still progresses, but it's, it's just a disconnect with, a, again, the theme and the mechanics. Now, once you do complete Scenario 12, all of the new cards will have been added to your copy of Draconis Invasion. As Sean mentioned earlier, there's randomizers for all the new attackers and defenders. Uh, and you can continue to play, mixing and matching the cards as you see fit. Including, or perhaps except, for a couple of cards that there's no way to play with again. Yeah, unless you make up your own rules for them. Again, I'm trying to avoid spoilers, but there, there's kind of a neat thing they do, but it just doesn't really lead anywhere. Yep. Now, again, uh, I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm just going to say each of these packs, each like pack one through 12, changes and adds to the game in some way. Now, most of these just give you new cards to buy or new monsters to defeat. Like, you're not changing any of the other decks, you're not adding new events, you're just, here's new stuff you can buy, here's new things to beat. Um, there are, or sorry, new, new actions too, right? So you have actions and defenders. There's decks that just give you actions and defenders. Sometimes you get new monsters. Some cause significant changes to the feel of the game. But again, the mechanics don't change. You're still doing A, B, C, D, E, F. Um, the terror still rolls up the same. You still start with a D6 roll to see what goes for. Like none of that changes. Mechanically, it's the same. It's just kind of the feel of the game. Now, really high level overview. The changes you're going to see are single use cards that you play it and it's trash. So that's something new that was in the original game. Completely new starting defenders. And what's cool about this is this gives everyone completely different starting decks. Not from each other. Now, that would be cool. There's something we should try, is mix and match them so every player starts with different defenders. That's not in the game. So, so different starting defenders for all players. Uh, new powerful invaders. Um, they include some interesting combos that make them easier to defeat with certain combos. Uh, new defenders that defeat invaders in new ways. That's all I'll say. Um, after battle effects that involve more player interaction. So not just take a terror or take a terror on your deck or draw only three cards. That's all that was in the original game. Now you're going to be passing cards to other players, collecting terror from new places. Everyone's going to get something. Added to that are events that are going to reward the players with the least kills instead of punishing those with the most. That is greatly appreciated. And of course, more. 
Okay, so lots of new cards doing new things. How well does this all work together? Should Draconis fans be rushing to pick this expansion up? All right, so this had to get in here somewhere, and I wasn't sure exactly where to put this in this review, but I think this is the best place to put it. So before I go any further, I have to bring up a serious problem with this expansion that can, will, and should be a complete turnoff for some game players. When you get to scenario five of Wrath of Draconis Invasion, the game requires you to own certain exclusive promo cards in order to be able to set up the scenario and play through it. Now, these promo cards were included as part of the last Draconis Invasion Kickstarter, but are not included in the retail version of Draconis Invasion, which is the version I was sent to review. Due to this, we get to chapter five. We're one third of the way through, right? We beat four out of 12. So we're one th third of the box. We still have two thirds to go and we're stopped. We're done. There is no way for us to progress forward by the rules as written. By what is presented in this box, we're dead in the water. So I was playing with Sean at the time, and I think Deanna had joined us at this point. I think that's right when she joined us, was, was right at that point. And we discussed options. So like, do we just stop? Like, like, do I then go on the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast and just say, don't buy this because you can only play one third of it? Or do we play through just skipping those cards, right? Like, so your market is no longer six attackers, six defenders. Do I, like I didn't even know. I was so frustrated when I saw this. Like, like re, I, I, I was shocked. And to be fair, I mean, we spent an inordinate amount of time. Uh, I'd been managing the cards ever since we, mm -hmm. ever since we first broke out the original Draconis. Um, I had just been the one who had organized the the box and, mm -hmm. and laid out everything and alphabetized all the dividers. And I, I thought I had made a horrible mistake. Yeah. I, I was sure that you know, I, I had done it right. And I, I somehow I had mixed up something or when I'd been adding some of the first four sets of, of dividers and things, I'd, I'd made a mistake and mixed myself up. And, and I mean, we probably spent half an hour at least trying to find out where these cards are that yeah. it was telling us to put on the table. Yeah. Like I even went and grabbed my original Draconis book. Cause I'm like, maybe these aren't promo cards. Cause like we went through there. Cause you have a card that tells you everything that was new in each pack. So we went through one through four and like, no, nope, those cards aren't here. Then I grabbed my original book and there's a whole section of the back where it lists every card and it repeats the card text, which we had a comment on in another <laughs> review. And I'm like, they're not there. Nowhere was anything in any of the Draconis stuff. I own mentioning any of these cards. So publishers don't publish an expansion for a game that requires the use of promos. That's that's unforgivable. Like, what are you doing? And if you're going to do that, put a big sticker on the box that tells me that before I open it up. Yeah, this... Uh, eventually, we thought to go online and look to see who else had noted this problem. And sure enough, there was a thread on Board Game Geek where the designer acknowledges the problem and there offers up the list of substitutions. Right. Uh, and we learned also in that thread that it isn't just that one uh uh scenario but three different scenarios yeah. that require promo cards uh and to be fair and to be to note there are actually two separate packs of promo cards did we ever figure out if you it's needed both one. of them it's only one i mentioned it down below when we get to the end but yeah it's only one set of promo cards that you can now purchase that you would need oh okay it is not both so well i'm glad that it was addressed, right? Jeff, Jeff knows it's an issue and he addressed it on Board Game Geek, but it needs to be addressed in this box somehow. Like we're experienced gamers, right? We're, I, I hate to use the term, we're alpha gamers, right? We have, we do a board game podcast every week and twice a week and, and we're constantly talking board games and we're on Board Game Geek regularly and I've been a member since like 2002 and I know to check there when we find problems like this, but your average gamer who buys a copy of this cool looking card game with a dragon on the cover and then the small expansion box or goes online and buys it. I have no idea where to look when they run into a problem like this. Like without something included in the box, this expansion is almost two thirds unplayable as a campaign. So I will note one of the things that didn't even click into my head at the time when I was getting frustrated by this is it is just the campaign that's ruined. So the box does have a bit more value than I was thinking. Like I'm originally thinking, throw it out. I can't finish it. You know what? You still got 400 new cards. So there's nothing from stopping you from just opening up all the card packs, putting them in your game and forgetting the whole scenario thing. So 
fair enough. It doesn't invalidate the rest of the box, but you can't continue the campaign without this additional information. Yeah. So fair warning. Uh, if you pick up the Wrath expansion for Draconis Invasion and you don't have the Kickstarter edition with the promos and you are willing to buy them direct from the publisher, you're going to need to go on Board Game Geek and find the substitution list to complete the campaign as written. Yes. All right, putting that aside, let's ignore that major problem. Let's assume that uh, before the retail versions get to the box, they manage to slip a sheet in the shrink wrap with everyone or something, or they put a QR code to Board Game Geek or something. Let's assume this gets fixed some way, or you at least know it's a problem, so there's a way way to find it out. So let's let's tossing that out. Just looking at Wrath or Draconis on its own. All right, quality. Quality was great. Like, like I'm happy with it. I have no complaints. Um, as we mentioned earlier, the differences in card backs is subtle enough. You have to go looking for it. And everything else is as good or better quality than the original game. I appreciate the amount of color and variety in the new artwork, though we did have to question some of the names that were used for some of the cards. Uh, if you do have it, just take a look at the Goblin Enforcer card for an example of something that just doesn't quite fit. The biggest toughest most humanoid goblin i have ever run across anywhere i still assume it's a little tiny goblin in a suit that's the only way that card makes sense to me there we go and that's in my head canon that's what it is it's the labyrinth thing uh the new card abilities excuse me the new card abilities cover quite a range with a focus on player interaction managing terror and cycling your deck these are the big things they added to draconis with it and what I thought was neat is they actually kind of grouped these abilities when they were revealed. So you would start a scenario and you would get a bunch of new cards that all kind of do the, the same thing, right? Like a bunch of new cards for cycling your deck or a bunch of new cards that do stuff with terror. Along with this, I really like the fact they gave us new basic defenders. We already kind of hinted at this. So about every three packs or so, you actually replace the basic card that everyone starts with with something new. And I thought that was fun. And I liked how much it changed up the feel of the game. Though I have to admit, there was one new basic defender that none of us who played liked. And it's one I may never put in a game. But I do dig that the variety is there. Yeah, it's interesting. It, this one particular mechanic was enough of a change in play style when it came up that it did not sit well with our own uh, our own style of playing. Now, yeah. I won't go to say, go for, so far as to say it's a bad card concept, but uh, we struggled to make it work in our group. Yes, I agree. So. Now, a very welcome addition that was nice and early in the box, and this was actually one of my main complaints about the base game, was the lack of variety in event cards and how every event card targeted the leader. I am very happy they mixed this up quite a bit. Though I do still kind of wonder why they put so many copies of each individual event. Indeed, the maximum number of events in a six is in a six player game, uh, and you can have 18 event cards drawn. And mm -hmm. yet there are significantly oh, yeah. more cards than that. Uh, and at five players, we only ever went through all 15 once. Yeah, the only thing I can think of is they were trying to maybe there's some waiting being done. So that certain events happen more often than others. It, it just seemed odd to have that many. It just felt like you could have cut the deck in half by removing one copy of every card. Now, this expansion has a number of new invaders. Uh, these are the things you're fighting in both blue and gold levels. And I appreciate the new variety. Now, a twist I didn't expect is there are new unique invaders. Because in the previous game, all the event invaders there were multiple copies of, right? So there are new ones that are totally unique. Like there's only one copy of it in the entire deck. And they don't have corresponding campaign cards, which I thought was an interesting design choice. And I'm pretty sure it's intentional. The one effect this did have was to curb the rather powerful strategy of just hoarding campaign cards. In the original game, anytime you had nothing else to do, you grab two random cards, just hoping you get a lucky match. Or later when you can kill something, you've already got the card for it, right? With this new card balance, campaign cards are still important. They're still an important part of the game. But it's much more likely players are going to pick and choose now. And I think that fits the game better. Indeed. I think campaign cards are no longer the way to win every time, which in the original game, they really were. Uh, if you, you know, you had to match your campaign cards with your kills or the person who did was going to win. Yes. 
Yeah, if one person was doing it, everyone had to. That's what I found in the original. You could play a game where everyone kind of ignored them and it would work. But as soon as one player started collecting them and you knew they're, you know, they're laying out their cards in a certain way, you're like, oh, they got a through few they've fulfilled there. You basically had to start going that route. Now, with all these new cards and scenarios, I, I think this is going to be true of any expansion with this many cards in it. I will say that some were much more fun than others. There were a couple of scenarios that took steps to speed up the game that I honestly felt did not work at all with two players. But then that exact same scenario limitation worked great with five players. And then there was a mix of defenders that made playing five players a real slug. Yeah, I, I can certainly see how once complete, uh, I would consider seeding the randomizers mm -hmm. depending on the player count so that, oh, wait, if we're going to be playing with five players, we do not want to risk having these guys in there. Yeah. We'll take those out and we'll randomize from the remaining. And that's something I would love to see with from the publisher. Just give me a list of recommended cards per player count would be a nice one. Like this card works great at two players. This one works great at six. Um, if I play this game a bunch more times, I'll be really tempted to like throw in a sheet of paper where I make notes like that. Now, the weakest part of the campaign, not the gameplay, but the actual campaign is the story. Well, I appreciate an ongoing story that evolves as you play. That's something we called out that was kind of missing in the original the story is not written very well. And then the mechanics of the scenarios didn't tie in well to the story all that often. Yes, yeah, some of the card names kind of match what was going on, but like the abilities didn't seem to match. And it's like, here's a thing where we're all supposed to work together. And then all of the new cards are take that cards. It just didn't really make sense to me. Just like they didn't, they should have been woven together better. And I needed an editor who didn't like commas nearly so much. Um, I particularly hated the end of the story, which I don't want to spoil, but there's a certain trope in fantasy gaming and fantasy writing that most writers nowadays know to avoid. Uh, whoever wrote the story didn't get that memo. Now, it's certainly better than just having titles for the scenarios as in the base game. Mm. There is more effort put into it, but it could have definitely used a bit of refinement. Now, I was also really bummed out that we didn't get anything. We didn't unlock anything. There was no reward. There was no, no, you, we played through 12 scenarios of Draconis Invasion. We beat the Draconis. We finished and it was just done. Like, like there was nothing. I, I would have liked something new to add to the game at the end. Like I, Pack 12 didn't even have to be a scenario. Pack 12 could have been a reward and I would have been happier. The stuff actually to make sense based on some of the cards that were in there that would have been a good reward actually now that i think about it but like i would have loved to see something like i i would love six unique cards that you shuffle between players at the start of the game and give me a bit of asymmetry or a set of recommended card combinations like we were just talking about when going forward if you play two player try this if you play this try this or if you enjoyed playing this scenario perhaps try this or i don't know um, some really powerful action card that you can actually only buy if you've completed the campaign. So it rewards players who've completed it versus those that haven't. I, I don't know. I don't know what exactly, but I wanted something. Like, to be honest, there's not even a, a denouement. There's no finish to the story. It, it leads you up to the final battle, but there's no uh, congratulations, you won. Like, even a card that said those words would be more than what we got. Indeed, uh, something I didn't want to explain the resolution and potentially line up further expansions would have given a level of satisfaction that was absolutely missing yeah. after putting in that time to play through the entire tale. Yeah, slip something in the, the, the pack 13. You didn't want us to open it to the end. The, they're taller cards. You could have easily slid in some short cards. We didn't know were in there. I don't know. I just wanted more. Now, one thing we all felt, this, this is for all five players that I played the game with over the, the, the last weekend, was it's just so close to awesome. Like, it's a solid game. We, we had fun playing it, right? We must have. We played 12 games over one weekend, and we are not completely sick of it. I'm talking about Draconis, thinking about we earlier, we were doing an AMA, and people were asking us, what games do you want to show off? This is one. I want to bring this out to the local game store and try it with six players. I want to get my deck building friends, the, my, my, my friend Charles, who loves Dominion. I want him to try this game and see what he can do with it, because he'll come up with card combos. He'll, he'll find a way to use those two cards that we kind of alluded to earlier in an amazing way, right? So, like, it's it's a good game. It keeps drawing us back in. We weren't sick of this when we were done, but we just kept spotting little things, just, just little tiny things that were just so close, like just a little bit better. 
Uh, for one, naming the characters that match the artwork and the abilities. So like if you've got a flaming sword, have it do something like use terror to do damage because it's a flaming sword or have the ice sword do some kind of freezing effect and not let me search my deck for some reason I don't understand or like any of them. I'm, I'm mentioning cards from both sets. Sorry. I guess there's some very slight spoilers here. Um, just have cards that, that make sense more the, the, the goblin enforcer we talked about make it look like a goblin or they can show the little guy in the suit um someone in the chat pointed out they think it's someone who enforces goblins but then have a picture of a goblin being whipped on the card or something i don't know um card costs seemed arbitrary and sometimes seemed way too high or way too low um there were cards we never bought in the entire 12 match every time that card was up it was just like that's a card no one buys and there were other cards that would go out run out first every player as soon as they could would buy those cards until that deck's out and and the story elements weren't cohesive there was a whole thing where we're like we're we're running and then we're under siege and now we're running again just lots of little tiny things just just could have been improved just with a little bit more work that just would have made this game from yeah i want to play it again so i, I already dig it to oh this game's amazing go check it out yeah like in the base game i don't recall um other than one specific card I don't remember any other cards that when it was brought out, when it was in the market, that everyone went for it. You know, yeah. if, if you had the money, you bought that card. Yes. Um, whereas in the news, in the, in the expansion, there are a number of cards that were, you know, I mean, oh, if, yeah. if, especially in the larger groups, if you weren't paying attention, you missed out. That card yeah. went away. Um, and you could get some really incredible combos. Mm -hmm. um, we were doing yeah, like full deck cycling and, yes. and like full deck cycling and a half, you know, all, you know, almost to the point where we were running through the deck twice yeah. um, it, with some of these combos. And that was, that was exciting. That was fun. fun. And yet every once in a while, there'd be a card where you're like, Oh, that card's out in this game again. Great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so overall, uh, we had fun playing through Wrath for Draconis Invasion. Uh, Draconis is already a very solid fantasy deck building game. And in almost all ways, Wrath builds on and improves that experience. Well, I didn't love every new card. And I found many of the scenarios were more fun than others. I enjoyed playing through this campaign and discovering the new aspects of play that changed the feel of Draconis Invasion without changing the game, without changing the rules or mechanics. You're still doing the same things, but it felt unique and different. While there are some things I wish were improved, things that could make this expansion even better, it's still really solid. That is except for the one major huge problem of having scenarios that require you to own cards that were released as promotional items. While you can find a substitution list for this problem on Board Game Geek and now also on our blog, and you know what, I'll just mention it later tonight, you shouldn't need to go outside this box to use it. I seriously hope Jeff and Keji can find some way to, to get this in the box somehow, whether it's a QR code to download something, some way before this hits retail. Like this entire system could crash and burn because of this one problem. Even just a little card or slip of paper shoved in the box to let people know what those substitutions are. Yeah. Otherwise people are going to try end up playing with five or four card market lines. And that's not really going to work. Uh, I, you know, in the chat room, somebody mentioned, you know, Oh, well they can just, you know, send out the promo packs to the retailers mm -hmm. to include with, well, those are $40 promo packs. Yeah. Uh, they aren't going to give those away free. <laughs> now, maybe here's another suggestion. They can send out the three specific cards that are affected instead of the entire promo pack. I don't like I'm thinking of I've seen publishers do this. So I know it can be done is it's work. You have to unshrink wrap all your games, but you include something inside the shrink or a sticker, just a sticker that says, no, this. Yeah. That way you're not having to reproduce, reprint the entire game. I don't know. I just hope for Jeff's sake, you can figure out something for this. All right, if you own Draconis Invasion and you back the Kickstarter and you got all the promos that came out for it, just pick up Rat. Like, like there's honestly no reason not to um, go pre-order it right now from their website. For someone that has everything, this expansion is just going to give you more of what you already dig. 
and they're going to be new combinations of way to play. Like, I honestly can't see any reason for someone who already has this stuff and enjoys the game, even a little bit to not pick this up. Yeah. I, though I sort of expect that if you are this person, you probably went already went in on the original Kickstarter for wrath and may already have it in your hands. Yeah, though, if you back the first edition in 2015, you may not have backed the other because you already had the original or not. So for those of you who are out there, now, if you do own Draconis Invasion, but don't have the promo materials, whether you back the original Kickstarter, you managed to get a retail copy, or you back the most recent Kickstarter and just didn't get the add-ons or anything, and you're reading this, I do suggest you pick up, sorry, reading, listening to this, I do suggest you pick up Wrath. Um, since you've listened tonight, you know about the promo card issue, right? And you know where to find a fix. So I, you know what? I'll give you the list by the end of this episode. And you can find it on our blog. You can find it on Board Game Geek. Overall, Wrath made Draconis better. So to me, if you enjoy the game, this is a must-have. Get the substitution list, use it. It's not perfect. I would have rather had the promo cards, but it works. Yeah, and while we did find that you can buy the promo cards, their cost on top of what is arguably already a pricey game and expansion was a bit of a sticker shock. Yeah, it is not cheap. The thing is, it's not just the three cards, it's other promos. It's they've combined promos from two different Kickstarters. You do get a significant number of cards. Now, if you have played Draconis Invasion, right? You went to a local game store event, you demoed it at Gen Con or Origins back when it came out and you like it well enough, but we're kind of on the fence. You didn't love it, but it was neat. Wrath might just improve the game enough for you to get it to the table more often or to want to actually pick up a copy and play it. Like if your complaints from trying that original game like mine resolved mainly around lack of variety, especially with the events, why were there only three events and why are there only three different types of invaders, right? This may just make that game, the game that you want to play and hits the table. Yeah. Well, so it, however, it is a bit of an expensive purchase again, for those who are unsure. Yeah, hopefully with local gaming events come up, you can do a demo of it again. Maybe doing a demo of Wrath would be great. Now, if you've not played Draconis Invasion and you're thinking of picking up both games, people do that, right? They buy the game and the expansion at once. I don't blame you. Like, to me, that's probably, that's how I got it. I got both together. This could be a solid choice, especially if you can find some kind of bundle deal that's got a sale. I don't know of one of those currently, but just as, as a point out. But be aware, the retail second edition of Draconis Invasion, which is the one about to hit stores, does not include these promo cards. So you are going to run into that problem. You are going to have to do the substitutions or again, go try to find a way to get these promo cards. So do watch out as they are currently between retail releases. As yeah. we mentioned, you can pre-order on their website. And I went for a look today and prices on the secondary market are dumb. Uh, Plus, currently, for the version one version of the game, if you want, uh, if you want what we have, um, actually, sorry, better than what we have. So it's the if you want the 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 uh, base game with the promo and wrath, uh, I was seeing that going for almost two hundred dollars US. Uh, so that that's someone selling their Kickstarter versions. So yeah. Wait for the retail. I think you're just gonna have to wait for the retail. Now, I mentioned this already. One thing I want to do before we sign off for tonight to save anyone from having to go to Board Game Geek, not that there's anything wrong with Board Game Geek, but trying to find the thread isn't easy. you got to go find the game and go through the forums and try to find it. Where Jeff points out the substitutions, I think we'll just list them here. I don't see any reason not to do this. Now, I've also put this list on the written version of the review over on the blog, so you can find it there. And you know what? I'll throw it in the show notes, too. That way you've got a permanent record of it somewhere. So this is pretty simple. These substitutions are required for scenarios five, nine, and 10. You are going to substitute Dragon Hunter with Dragon Slayer. So Dragon Hunter is the card it calls for. Dragon Slayer is the card you will have from the base game. You're going to substitute Soul Frame, Flame, Soul Flame with reinforcements. And you're going to substitute Call to Arms with Courage. Yeah. So that's it for our review of the Wrath expansion for Draconis Invasion, which should be hitting retail soon. I invite you to ch also check out Mo's written review over uh, uh, of this expansion over on the blog at tabletopbellhop.com. You can find it under reviews or use the search bar in the sidebar. 